so much for coming. Um, let us know in the comments where you're all from. Um, we've got a couple of international people um, looking from today. Um, this is Finding the Why, a weekly podcast um, hosted by Keb's Gallery through Zoom um, by artists Sarah Hardy and Kirsty Keb. Um, Finding the Why is a community of artists coming together to build relationships and disrupt the elite system. It's uh, there for strong opinions and honest talk with professional artists and guests, from prejudice to bananas that take to a wall to exposés. Um, we are about helping you to find your why, not just in your art, but also in yourself. Um, there we go. <laughs> Um, in fact, there's a couple of things that have hit our eye in the news this week, um, and one of them was the Royal College of Arts in London. And um, during COVID, people had left their art supplies, sculptures, paintings, even work that they've been commissioned um, in their studio spaces, hoping that it would be they kept there then they can safely remove it but when coming in to collect their stuff they found that all of their everything has been either been lost or damaged or thrown into boxes in storage um and the rca are sitting there and going well we'll only give you partial reimbursement we won't give you money for the time you took to create it we're not going to give you materials we're not going to give you the value of it we're just going to give you however much it costs you to make, and that's it. And is that fair? Because if it was the university that broke them or lost them or moved them, it wasn't the students. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that um, one of the students, Babash um, Ravazi, I think I've said that right. Um, some of her work was work well, well the, the the entire process taken into account. So you've got materials, time, um, you know, any research and development. Um, it came to in at around fifty thousand pounds. And if you think that the time spent kind of doing all of that, investing part of yourself into it, it's an utter heartbreak. And when you think about the opportunities lost, I think some of the sponsorship she had was revoked. She'd produced a commission for the science museum as well. When you when you take all of that into consideration, the fact that people are trying to make a livelihood from this kind of um, you know from their career as well. I mean, obviously a career you, you have to make a livelihood, but art is not just um, a hobby. <laughs> and I I feel to to a certain extent um, it it is still treated like a hobby, and you know with regards to the compensation people forget um that yeah it's it's something that you love to do but again you have to you have to survive on it and to invest as well to invest so much in a in a degree and have that happen um is just beyond words really <laughs> yeah it's pretty it's not like the students are asking for their money back for their courses they're literally just asking can you just pay reprimands on the damages and the losses that you have caused. That's all they're asking for. Mm -hmm. And it's just craziness to not pay them back uh, without proof of seeing what things are. People's time is money. As artists, we are businesses. We do have to live, we have to eat. If you've got commissions there that the university has damaged or lost, and all of a sudden, that's detrimental to the artist, the artist's integrity, their name, from a, the commissioner's point of view. They might not understand that this has happened, and well, from, and you never know, they might refuse to ask for their money back because they couldn't provide what they had created for the commission. Yeah. So it's, it's really a hard situation to be in for the artist. And my heart absolutely goes out to them. Yeah, I think one girl had actually sold two pieces worth about three thousand pounds, and um, she actually had to reimburse um, the buyer because obviously the pieces have just totally gone missing. Um, but yeah, that there are you know there were materials, 
went missing as as well as actual finished artwork but probably artwork in progress you know what a artist are like yeah. <laughs> having bits lying around but um it was it was like really interesting I was just wondering if it had happened to anybody else if anybody else had had any experiences of kind of leaving their artwork work somewhere and it going missing or um you know have you been part of an institution that's kind of had a similar scenario um I know when I was at um art college I went away for the summer and I'd put my heart and soul I used to do ceramics I put my heart and soul into doing this this tiled piece and it was based on Gaudi <laughs> I love Gaudi um and I was all oh, the whole summer I was like right what can I do with this piece where can I put it in my home and I went back and it had been binned so it's just you know it, I know it does happen but this is like an almighty scale that it's it's really gone wrong it's true this is just a whole other level of gone wrong um I mean even at my college um uh, when we we left our artworks there for the um the teacher to put onto the walls for us then for our um end of course show and when I walked in I'd seen corners were ripped there were holes in there like they'd put nails in and then decided no we're going to put sticky backs on you could really see there was damage all along the sides and uh, they put things upside down even though things were clearly marked on the back um, and it, it's just amazing to see how things can go so wrong because of it could just take one person to uh, complete <laughs> to do this um and it's true I, I feel like there's just this stigma you're a student so we don't care as much it's not my stuff um you should or you shouldn't have left it you should have thought before COVID you should have taken it out and taken it home with you so you had it safe but that's not the point it was there for their safeguarded you weren't allowed in so they couldn't get it <laughs> they couldn't take it home it should have been safe I do wonder whether it's another case of kind of um, really bad really poor communication you know you, you tend to find when things like this happen um just circumstances and expectations have been really really poorly communicated um but so you know um it's an art institution and people should know kind of what goes on there and the value of what's being held within that as well so yeah yeah that's true you never know if someone just went and said you know what let's set up for the next year let's put things in boxes and put them carefully in the next room and things might have fallen and broken by accident or a box could have fallen or something was put down too harshly but it just doesn't it still doesn't excuse it because it's them that did it and they, they should put their hands up and say yes we did it and give a full reimbursement for them yeah mm -hmm. there might be students that might take the mick a little bit and try and con them out more money than what they was worth but those artists that are actually speaking the truth and coming from the heart the commissions the pieces sold all of this stuff that can be proven should be paid back not just material costs yeah as i say it'd be interesting to to hear if any of our listeners have been in a similar um situation um please feel free to to contribute and join in and kind of leave your comments um all will be regarded <laughs> <laughs> it'd be great to hear the stories uh, so you just can't believe what goes on sometimes uh, um, and, uh, but on a brighter news, the Louvre gets the first female director in 228 years. This is a whole new milestone for the most visited gallery in the entire world. Um, and I, I'm pumped about it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, she has such good, fantastic ideas, even down to keeping it open for that little bit longer so younger people can go there and have a meal and see the art and actually be able to experience it rather than seeing if they have time in the daytime which they might not have mm -hmm. yeah i see she, she's already been well um um oh what well, sorry just lost my train of thought <laughs> She she ha she bring I think she brings with her a wealth of experience. I mean, obviously she's she's been um, her current roles at the um, the, the Musée d'Orsay and um, the Musée de l'Orangerie, <laughs> sorry, um, 
and she she actually studied at the same um, place as the current director, which is um, Jean Luc Martinez. Um, and I mean, I think he's had mixed receptions just due to the way he's handled his role. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's already had rave reviews for you know previous exhibitions for previous management roles. Um, she was part of the, you know, she had the, um, the role of sci um, scientific director development, um, the Louvre of um, Abu Dhabi. Um, and she, she did amazing things there. So she's bringing with her a wealth of experience. And um, she, she's just, she seems so open to new and fresh ideas, which I think, you know, some places they can say they're a up and coming but when you actually look at what they're doing they're actually stuck fast they're just rewording it they're rehashing it but already she's she's talked about cultural collaborations um exposing cross arts you know kind of having exhibitions with dance with um writers um des designers um and yeah it's it just sounds like she can do she can do nothing wrong. I mean, obviously, you know, nobody's infallible, but it is really, really exciting to to hear that she's got this role. So Yeah, she sounds like such a formidable woman. Like she's there and she cares and she wants to get the word out about art to everyone. And even not just painters, she wants to get the word of all types of art forms to the public and get them seen and have them all equal in a sense. Uh, that they should all be seen in a big gallery uh, with millions of visitors a year. Mm -hmm. And it's also a big step for females as well. Um, we we are starting to see equal opportunities a lot more, especially in Europe and UK, um, where she's, been, she's in over 200 years, they've not had a female director as she's come in. If you look at a lot of the management team in the Louvre, um, over 60% are now women. Um, women are getting onto um, being able to run institutions. They're being seen equal as men and actually being given the jobs uh, that are high up. Um, and it's just fantastic to see that if we really are equal and we are being considered the same way now. So it's, it's just a whole new era, really. <laughs> well, a new bar. Have you ever been to the Louvre? No, I haven't. Oh, it, it, is, it is quite something. It takes a while to get round. <laughs> I think um, one of my most memorable moments, and probably a lot of people, was um, seeing the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Um, because you literally view it from behind <laughs> hundreds of people, all with stood with their phones in the air, and you can see picture upon picture upon picture of the same scene. Um, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It yeah, it, it it is something to see though. Oh, that that aside, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Um, it's <laughs> I've I've never been there, but the photos that you see is just kind of comical. That all these arms in the air taking a photo, and you're just there like you're in the moment. Look, don't mm. don't worry. It, like you want to put yes, you want to preserve the moment with a photo. But also experience the moment. Who cares what people are going to say on your social media that you want to show that you're there? Like, so what? Just experience it, and then you have that memory. You have that story you can tell of, rather than just a click. I was here. Hmm. I think though that's an analogy for life, really, as well, isn't it? Yeah. And you're trying to be more present and not be swept up in that whole social media phenomena, which I know so many of us have been. And it's kind of what we're projecting outwards. You know, we only see that kind of that kind of filtered version invariably of somebody, but there is so much going on kind of under underneath that, but also kind of being, I don't know, absorbed in 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 the present and not forward thinking as to how can I present myself in a way that other people want to see. If that makes sense. That makes I'm probably sense. going off on a bit of a tangent again. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way my brain works. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's just so funny the way people just like they want to take the photo. It's not for the moment; it's for the likes and the comments, and the follows. Mm. Um, even to a point, I went to the Van Gogh exhibition in London. Um, it must have been two or three years ago now, 
um, and I walked in and there's just this one man with a camera, a massive camera, and he would go snap, 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 snap. And he was so determined to get like the perfect um, like shot of it, the right angle. There's this little old woman who'd literally knocked out on the floor to get her out of his way, take a photo, and everyone was like helping her off, and he just like shrugs his shoulder at her. And it's this mentality that material and your social presence is more important than another life. And it was so well displayed there that I just, it made me sick to actually just think, why is a photo more important than another person? Like, so what? She's in the way. She's, she's in the present. She's enjoying what she's seeing in front of her. She's looking at the artwork and seeing what you can't see on a computer screen. And she is loving it. Like, just let her be and she'll eventually move. Like, what's the rush? <laughs> it, it was, it was insane. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Yeah. It, uh, I suppose there's always a rush for these things. And, it, you know, it's like when you go to any high profile, like museum or art gallery or, you know, it's the same in Amsterdam. It was kind of elbows at dawn <laughs> to have that front row and have take that photo. Um, and it, in, to a certain extent, it seems unavoidable, but it, it also kind of relies heavily on um, people's decorum. Yeah. <laughs> it's given, but it's, it, unfortunately, it's not always that. So. Yeah. There's always one person. There will always be one person. It's a shame, but it's something you get. You have to like get past. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then the next one again was the idea of um, lost and stolen. Um, there was a street artist in Italy, kind of like the Italian Banksy, is the best way to describe her. Um, she's suing the Vatican City for taking a photo of her artwork um, that was on display on a wall or a bridge and they put it on stamps, credited the original artwork by Hoffman but did not credit her at all who did the actual artwork, edited it, did the um, just use it, heart in the centre um, and she only actually found out about that they were using it through social media and um, she just went on one day and saw that it was happening the vatican are selling on it so like 132 euros each um, and they sold well over eighty thousand. they have sold out and had to put on a second round of them and so she's suing them for about 160,000 euros which is roughly what their profit would have been yeah they were was... sorry go on <laughs> And the funniest part about it to me is she's asking for this money and they counter offered with, well, you can meet the Pope and have a couple of stamps for free. <laughs> Apparently the work was only stylized on, um, I think it's Heinrich, would you pronounce it Heinrich um, Hoffman? Um, so she actually produced her own version and then emblazoned this um, heart on its chest um, and posted it on a on, well, under a bridge, just um, quite near the, the Vatican. Um, and why would they, if, if that was the case, why would they credit him instead of her as well? That that, that doesn't make sense, especially if it was only stylized on his work. Um, but it, it, it happens time and time again, doesn't it, where the, the original artist isn't credited for an original piece of art. Um, I feel like half the time it's laziness. Uh, they can't be bothered. Like it doesn't matter who's made the artwork. All that matters is the profit. Like yeah, they saw the original piece of Hoffman's cool. We'll credit him, but he wasn't the one who actually made it. But they don't care. They don't. And to come to counter offer it with, you can meet the Pope and have a couple of stamps free. It's just ludicrous. It, she's lost out on all of these royalties. She hadn't even agreed for it to happen. There was no yes, she can use it. Her intellectual property was completely violated in the way because graffiti art still holds the exact same intellectual property as a painting or a sculpture. There's just fair usage. And this is not fair usage. It, they used it for profit and they used it knowing that it wasn't Hoffman. <laughs> 
Mm. I think what's even more damning is the fact that the Vatican are so rigorous in um, enforcing copyright mm. on all of the other artwork that is kind of held under their roof. Um, and so to actually... <laughs> it's, oh, no. it's just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pressing buttons. <laughs> But little known fact, did you know that you can get into the Vatican for free on the last Sunday of the month? Mm. <laughs> that's that, that's something that I found out purely by chance. Um, but yeah, it's quite handy, actually. It's quite saving. Um, but again, we want to know, you know, has something like this happened to you? And um, to what extent were you affected? Did you take action on it? Um, it would be really interesting to, to hear your views. Yeah, it'd be great. But we're offered a meet and greet with the Pope as well. <laughs> Have you met the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot smaller scale for me. I mean, I've had someone share their share my artwork saying it was their own, and they were trying to take. They were literally putting their name on it, um, and it was getting to the point where I was having to threaten a cease and desist their document to make them stop. Luckily, I didn't actually have to do one because I had no clue what I was doing there. <laughs> um, but it's, it, I have no words for it. I, I still don't have any words for it. And it wasn't like the artwork was good. I, I look at it now and I'm like, oh my God, like that was mine. Like that was awful. But at the time, it was such a big thing like, you know, make your own artwork. Like it, it's not. You know, um, there's just no need to try and steal someone else's image. Yeah, it's lazy at the end of the day. I do know that using hashtags, I have I have noticed if I've Googled my own for whatever reason, <laughs> not that I regularly Google myself, <laughs> um, but it does pop up on other sites um, fr from the hashtags, if that makes sense, not just on Instagram. So I don't know whether there's kind of any affiliation with Instagram with other platforms and other websites or whether there's a loophole somewhere or whether that yeah. makes it easier for people to adopt the work as well. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but apparently even um watermarking it if you know what you're doing apparently even watermarking is easily removed so it's kind of you take your chance putting it online full stop it's it's a really sad world where you know people have to steal other people's artwork as their own because well for whatever reason but. Yeah, and it's why it's so important that artists need to know what their intellectual property is and where the boundaries are. So then, if someone oversteps the boundaries, the artist can say to them, "Look, stop," and be able to be in the right because there is fair usage. But where does fair usage end? And you, you have to know that fine line. Even, even if you're not an artist, even if you're just taking photos of an artwork, you still need to know where the line is. And credit the artist. Always credit them because otherwise, if someone likes it and they see it and they go, oh my God, this artwork is amazing. They don't know who's made it. They don't know if it's you. And there could be a set of confusions. But artists and artists don't should always be credited for the amazing work that they do because they've spent time, money, effort, investment on that artwork for it to be seen. Um, that, that's just something that happens a lot in the art world. Artists don't get credited, especially if it's an incorporation that have um, that have got you to do it or have a team of artists that do it. They don't want to write your name on it. They just want their own logos on it. Uh, it's just a sad world that we live in. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but yeah if you want us to um, get someone on about intellectual property let us know and uh, we'd love to put on um, an episode where we have an expert come in and basically let you know what your rights are to your artwork and um, even to the point of graffiti art because people don't realize it really is the exact same intellectual property as if you've made a painting if you've made a sculpture and you have you, you are right to tell people to take it down. Yeah. And now we're on to Einstein. Yes. <laughs> um not not as much art news, um, but his handwritten um letter 
went and sold for $1.2 million in auction, which was three times more than what the auction house thought it would sell for. This is a crazy number just for a letter written by someone. Hmm. And it was one of only three um, written and written documents by Einstein that stated um, the, the formula of E equals MC squared. So that's <laughs> quite <funny. laughs> Apparently, it was, you know, even on a, a holo, holographic and a, a physics point of view, it was a very, very important letter um, that has, you know, that has obviously been sold on. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it uh, is, I do it, like a bit of Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's just, this situation is just so funny to me because that, that's only just gone on. It, it's a very important historical document, probably deserves to be in a museum or something, somewhere where people can see it and experience it as well. But to spend $1.2 million on something, which is like eight and a half thousand, um, £850,000 roughly, just on this is completely insane. Think of what you could do in, in the world with that sort of money invested into it. Um, and Think of what that money could do if it was invested in artists and artisans and even scientists and stuff like that, which are alive today, that could actually use that money, whereas um, the, rather than the estate of his stuff using the money, um, it's just mind boggling. Like some, Sometimes too much money can be a bad thing because it can just be flouted on I guess it's really uh, your status. By having this, it really ups your status and it's like a talking point and a, look what I've got but you don't sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, it, it happens a lot though. Um, I have some facts about Einstein if you'd like to know. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so he actually came from quite, I think probably quite humble beginnings, but he actually... He didn't really thrive at a very young age. I don't, he didn't really speak, in fact, for, for a couple of years in, in his youth. Um, and so it, it kind of was quite a tough start. He discovered the violin when he was about six. And thereafter, um, Mozart, um, Mozart's violin um, sonatas by the age of 13. It was said that if he hadn't been in the career of being um, a scientist, then he would likely have been a professional museum. Sorry, professional musician, <laughs> maybe <laughs> a professional musician even. Um, so there you go. Um, but he was very anti-war. I kind of love, you know, his his whole philosophy on life and, you know, his philanthropic work as well. Um, he actually revoked his German citizenship at one point um, because of World War One, and also um, in protest against Hitler and the Nazis in World War Two. Um, and another one, you know, another absolute genius who was, wasn't an overnight success, but he kept on and on and on and he kept going. And I think we spoke briefly about um, Edison before and the amount of experiments he'd conducted before he was actually started to be taken seriously. Um, <laughs> more currently, Denzel Washington. You know, we watched that, um, that YouTube clip. But yeah. I think that's a testament to kind of being an artist as well, that it might not necessarily be happening right now, but that doesn't give you an excuse to give up if you really love it and you really believe in your, your capacity to contribute to society through your art, through your creation, through your voice, then, you know, you never know how close you are to a breakthrough. So it's just like, keep going. Just think of Einstein. Yes. That's, that's my motto now. <laughs> what would Einstein do? <laughs> That. that's such an important point the grind will be worth it one day uh, so don't give up people just see overnight successes and so much even people overnight make millions all of a sudden that's not how it works that's just the sugar-coated glossy top that they want you to see they don't show the years of grind that they've done all the hard work and heart and energy and sweat and blood and tears that have all gone into it and I think that's what a lot of people need to just remember in their heads that you will get there one day. You will. And you just have to keep going. And you have to find it in yourself to be able to keep going. Um, and, yeah, what would Einstein do? Maybe that should be our tagline. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, I 
think that's all the stories we've got today. Uh, stop screen share. I should be a pro at this by now, but. <laughs> Yeah, so were we, were we going to go on to do some um, reviews? Oh, yes. Do your book review first. Um, yes, I remember where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> Organised. That's all right. <laughs> That's another conversation. <laughs> yeah. um, so my book today is by Rosalind Davis and Annabelle Tilly. It's what they didn't teach you in art school. Phenomenal book for every artist out there. This is like a shiny pot of gold for your for the artist. It goes through everything that you need to know. Residencies, funding, even um, proposals, network. Um, it's filled with case studies, museums, galleries consignments and contracts a lot of it is just a very brief overview of it so if you it's more like a reference thing uh, really but what the genius thing of this was literally a twitter tweet what didn't they teach you in art school everyone was suddenly piling in what they what they've had to find out on the job people were put in case, uh, case studies of what happened to them and how they found out about them and so rosalind and annabelle took this and, and ran with it and made a book uh, about it which is absolutely so helpful and I think I think this really is one of my new favourite reference books um, for the art practice just simply because of how helpful it is and I mean Rosalind Davis is also such a wonderful woman as well um, I've watched her do a couple of talks about her books and finding our place in the art world um, and yeah I, I can't I, there's, there's so much I could I could say about this book but there's not, just not enough time um, there's quotes in here uh, motivational quotes how to articulate personal development as well as the actual uh, business of art and um, so I would highly recommend people go and get this book and read it and use it as a reference because it's going to be so helpful I think like any form of training you come out the other end and you're like oh everything's shiny and you let me use these skills and you don't realize that you haven't actually got all of the skills you've got the very starting blocks yeah could be a, a, you know a career um but you go out into the big wide world and it's like you've come across all these hurdles that are there to help you learn mm. um and you know even as a therapist I I found that I did such extensive training and um you you learn a, so much on the job from dealing with different conditions um to dealing with different types of people different personalities um but it's like that with with art it's i suppose in in a sense there is only really advice there's no hard and fast formula for absolutely everybody and again we were talking about the advice that you should take and the advice that you should ignore and it's like I'm the kind of person that kind of I go oh right I've got all of this advice and so and so said this the other person said that I'll try it all <laughs> making it all doesn't work because you end up with a head like spaghetti yeah <laughs> it's so true coming out of any type of institution you've been in a bubble the entire time You've been in a positive energy and people are like, yeah, go do this, go do that. You have someone there as a tutor to help guide you through things. And all of a sudden when you've left, you're like, oh my God, this is a big wide world. What do I do? And you hit you hit a lot of hurdles. And people, I mean, so many people are willing to just say, look, I've experienced this. I didn't know this. And this is how I've learned from it. But yeah, everyone is different. Situations are all different. No situation is going to be the same for everyone, from people skills to how you've got your artwork somewhere to building personal relationships. And I think this is why it's such a good like reference handbook because it's, it, it brought internationally the art community together and actually highlights what it is to be a starting artist and to give you that little glimpse of guidance 
to, how to, what not to do, and how to make yourself that little bit better. Sounds cool. I, I must get myself a copy as well. <laughs> <laughs> What's your book? So, mine's a bit left field. <laughs> <Again. laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. So, this is a book I picked up. Um, several years ago I've actually read it several times and I tried to speed read it again uh, it's a book called hang on I'll get the hang of this screen okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a book by Tom Robbins um oh heck there you <laughs> go. um and it's called Skinny Legs and All and it's I, it was actually sold to me by a friend on the premise that was about an artist so I thought <laughs> okay I'll give that a go um I don't know if anybody knows anything about Tom Robbins but he basically he settled in Seattle um, and I think this was released, was it, did I read about 19, 1990? Yeah. Um, and this copy is really old and battered. It was, it was a bit battered when I first got it. Like I, I got it in a um, secondhand bookstore, but it's even more so battered now. Um, now this book, just to kind of cut the waffle, I suppose if I brought it down to, an, you know, kind of what it's about, the elements that it's about, um it's about the veils that we live under as a society um and tom robbins puts these um these veils down as race politics marriage art religion money and lust um and it's all done with a bit of humor um it's quite spiritual in places um it's got a bit of history to it it's got lots of character it can be a bit racy um but it's highly imaginative and very very lyrical in its delivery um, so basically, these veils um, are presented in the form of the story, which follows artist Ellen Cherry. She's she's gone through art school and she's still striving to make it. And um, her husband or partner, at least, um, Boomer. And <laughs> Boomer builds this great big motorhome for them, but it's in the shape of a well, what looks like a tinfoil turkey. <laughs> and they go, they go across um, the states uh, in this, and it draws a lot of attention. And basically, she splits from him and decides, "I want to try and make it in New York as an artist." So off she goes. She ends up waitressing at this very controversial restaurant, which is actually run by an Arab and a Jew, and it's been like a focal point for a lot of unrest. And they've got the United Nations on the other side of the road, so you can imagine the scenario. Um, but yeah, it, it's all about her trying to make her art career work amidst all of this, whilst Boomer actually goes on inadvertently or accidentally, should I say, to become an artist, a really high profile artist selling for thousands. And, um, it's kind of, it's typical, isn't it? You can put your, your heart and soul into your art and then somebody could like produce something that's taken like five minutes and all of a sudden it goes bang. <laughs> Explodes. Um, <laughs> so in that respect it's a really really entertaining um book obviously it's got a lot of it sounds very Keith Lemon <laughs> like what's the message but it does have a lot of messages in it um and I yeah it's one of the reasons I keep reading it, it because something fresh comes to light every time um aside from that there are some really kooky characters in here <laughs> <laughs> so there are some inanimate objects that come to life and follow the journey. Um, so you've got conch shell, you've got red stick, you've got spoon, you've got dirty sock and can of beans. And there's also um, a, an oddball character called, he's a street artist called Turnaround Norman. So look out for Turnaround Norman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds fantastic. I need to read it. <laughs> Oh, it's, it, it, it's so entertaining as I say it's, it's kind of quite it's dense in text mm. um, but you don't get bored yeah you, you cannot get bored I bookmarked this bit just because it kind of said it kind of summed up you know the veil the veil thing um but it's um let me find it uh why wasn't the mass of humankind aware of it because veils of ignorance disinformation and illusion separate separate us from that which is imperative to our understanding of our evolutionary journey. Shield us from the mystery that is central to being. And I kind of felt like, although it's such a thick book, that kind of said quite quite a lot um, with regards to, yeah, what, what the book's about. But yeah, it's definitely worth a read. He's got lots more. There's, I think the first one I ever read was called Jitterbug Perfume. And that's bonkers. That's completely bonkers. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> 
That sounds like such a brilliant book. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to get me that one, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Funny enough, when I first got it, the, the, these books were really quite cheap. And I've I've watched the price steadily rise. I mean, not, not ridiculously expensive, but they are kind of... I'm sure he's still alive, though. Yeah, it's starting <laughs> to get more popular. And watch after this, it's suddenly going to go up again. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a fantastic uh, book recommendation. Um, I'm definitely going to get myself one. Like, <laughs> that just sounds so brilliant. Let me know if you get any life tips from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, shall we go on to our five minute end of night challenge? Yes, let's. Um, let's. Let me find my Got our pin wheel. Um, we can grab your paper and your pen or oh. any drawing implements if you want to join in because we want to see some art. <laughs> that's a good point because I need to get myself some as well. <laughs> okay, can't do an art challenge without the materials. There we go. All right. Oh. Oh no. Well, I it last night. It's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll fix it for next week. Right, so we've got yourself as opposite or eyes closed and wrong hand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which one would you like to do? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have to be eyes closed with wrong hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ready for this. Right. Hang on, I need to find a stable surface because otherwise that's just going to be like another challenge. <laughs> oh, hang on, I've got a board here. Oh, All right. The left hand. Oh, I don't know what to draw. Is anybody else going to join in? <laughs> Have we got some music for this section this week? Oh. Right, so for this live stream, I'm able to put on some music and um, it's gonna have to be taken out for the upload so bear with us if you're watching this um, on catch up um, so what we're we gonna watch do you hear that no <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with me and technology we're so pro we're so pro we're so pro <laughs> We'll figure it out one week. <laughs> I bet it'll be the last ever episode we finally get it running. <laughs> right. No, it's not coming through. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I've got music anyway. <laughs> not because you're wearing headphones, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just a technical glitch there. <laughs> it totally wasn't my fault. <laughs> so, I think this is going to come out beautifully. <laughs> you keep wanting to look down, but I can, I can just click um, Spotify, <laughs> or is that not allowed? <laughs> we could do anything. Oh, I tell you what, because. Because it was, um, oh, I have to um, turn the music back up. Um, because it was National or International Africa Day, um, we will have a bit of. Oops, okay. okay, can you hear that? Oh, I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> So you're the music keeper, though. Okay, right. <laughs> so right, I suppose. <laughs> <Once> ready. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. I can't actually draw for that thing. 
I think mine's got a giraffe neck or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I can see that. Can you see it's me? Yeah, it's so accurate. I thought so. <laughs> what you can see of it. Oh, this damn background, I hate them. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we'll post it later so you can see it. I don't want you missing out on this masterpiece, seriously, it's amazing. I, just, I don't think I've ever produced anything that I'm not proud of. <laughs> if you want it, it's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. I'm even wearing a bow tie. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask what that was. I was like, you just have two little legs and like a flower or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cassie would be proud of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> My um uh, my my signatures are legible, but who cares? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> we know who did it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so yeah, if anyone has uh, joined in with, with that challenge, please do send us your pictures. Tag us. Yeah, yeah. We'll share them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date. Um. Join our Facebook group, follow us on Instagram, finding the why under dash podcast. Um, and just you'll keep up to date on new stories that we're finding and thinking is interesting. We've got the weekly podcast via Zoom. And next week we're going back to seven till eight. And if there are any news articles you want us to talk about, any challenges you want to see us do, um, Anything you want us to share, because at the end of the day, we're a community and everyone's arts deserves to be seen. So if you want anything shared via our channel, just let us know. Mm -hmm. um, should I give them like a rundown of some of the, the um, subjects or the topics that we've kind of discussed? Yes, yeah, um, let us know if you want them. Mm, so, so far, we've, we've kind of got a list and, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're really flexible. We're open to kind of listening to your views, obviously, and, and what you want, what you want to get from this podcast. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is provide you with a little community and provide support for, you know, for artists, being artists ourselves. We're kind of, we're all in this, in this together. So it's good to share. Um, so, so far, we've got um, 
you know, elements on dealing with rejection. I mean, this isn't just in the art, although the art world can be pretty brutal, but, you know, right across the arts, we're not just about artists, like as in visual artists, but, you know, we're open to writers joining in, um, dancers, um, you know, people involved in film, um, anybody who just kind of feels like they need that little bit of support and they, they like being part of that kind of nice little community. Um, we've got um, things on imposter syndrome and what we'd really like to do is get in maybe a life coach. Um, I know a couple who might be open to coming and doing slots with us. Um, but insecurities in social media, because as we discussed, that's a big part of kind of, you know, the front that we present and um, kind of, I suppose it opens us up to kind of being judged. But there again, we kind of, we, we only see like filters of what everybody um, projects out there. Um, and, you know, I, I suppose in that respect, it, it, it kind of, it makes it almost like you don't really know anybody unless you know them properly, because you think you know them because you, you see their profile, but it's, it's not necessarily true. Um, which advice is valuable um, as an artist or, uh, you know, a, a, within your career, what, what you should be listening to? Um, Self-care as well is so important, as Kirsty and I have discussed, you know, kind of making time for yourself and and your little rituals and kind of incorporating elements into your lifestyle to help you stay the best version of you. Um, getting organized, which as a creative can be quite, uh, it can be quite difficult. And when you have ideas bouncing around your head, sometimes it's hard to rein it back in, but there are ways and means of getting organized. Um, and another one that we have um, discussed, which we briefly touched on today is the persistence um, with which you apply to your career and the value, the actual value in the process. Obviously, you kind of have an idea of where you want to be going, but um, it's like seeing seeing it as a journey and not putting, you know, kind of staying consistent, but not putting oodles of pressure on yourself as if to overwhelm yourself because sometimes that can kind of send you flying backwards or it can, it, you know, you, you don't always end up in a, a good place because you, you you have put so much pressure on yourself. So they are, they are some of the topics that we've we've touched on. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else that you want us to discuss, then please drop us a line. And finally, one more thing, <laughs> um, we should we should mention Tat. Um, yeah, so I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you all might have noticed on our social medias um, that it is now just me and Sarah who will be doing this podcast. Um, unfortunately, Tat needs to take some time away um, for his mental health. And mental health is one of the most important things to life. And you, you deserve to be in a good place. And if you fix and you deserve to find it. Um, and we wish Tat the absolute best um, with everything that he does going forward. He is an amazing guy and such a good artist. Um, and we are very excited to see what he's going to be doing in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all the best, Tat. Um, we wish you well. And yeah. obviously we'll keep in touch and you never know, he may become a feature every now and again on the show. Or Yeah, whatever. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, and again, if you want us to do a session on mental health, because it is incredibly important, please let us know. And um, I mean... Again, everything is all advice and not everyone's situation is exactly the same. So take whatever we give you, take it as a pinch of salt, take what you want and forget about the rest. Um, and thank you so much for coming this evening um, and being a part of the community and listening to us two waffle on all night. <laughs> I'm laughing too much. Yeah. <laughs> Can you ever laugh too much? <laughs> no. Um, thank so, you so much. <laughs> Um, I hope everyone has a good evening and this will be uploaded onto YouTube, Anchor and all the other various um, platforms, Spotify, Deezer, Amazon. Um, so do make sure to catch up if you have missed us this evening and our next one is next week, 7 till 8pm, so catch us then as well. Take care. Bye. Take care, we'll see you soon. <laughs>